Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of the Generation of Wrestling Podcast. It's always as you are truly the 28-year-old piece of gold, the franchise, aka the showstopper, better known as the GOW's resident tribal chief. And with me as always, I got my tag team partner, my brother, my family. He is the flies in the room, Mr. One, Two, Three. Pin that ass down, K Breezy, aka Two Cold Kimber in the building, bro. How you doing? Man, I'm good, man. You know how we do, man. We got another special guest today, man. So of course, man. Hey, man, let's get into it. All right, well. Introducing our special guest, he's wrestling for Shine Wrestling, Progress Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, former Impact Knockouts Tag Team Champion, former Impact Knockouts Champion, Thick Mama Pump, Jordan Grace is in the building. How you doing, love? I'm good. How are you guys? Uh, good, good. Good. Well, thank you for taking the time to join us. You were definitely somebody we've had our eye on for a minute, so now that we got you here, I know we've been trying to you know juggle some things over the last week week and a half so once again we appreciate you coming on how you doing today i'm good you know it's funny actually as soon as you guys started uh started the the stream um my dog started acting crazy they were fine until you guys started the stream and they just started acting bizarre so this one is a bad guy <laughs> hopefully he's gonna stay out of the out of the interview <laughs> No, sorry, they just want to be a part of it. That's all. <laughs> the more the merrier. Well, Jordan, one of the things I want to talk to you about, first of all, your name is Jordan Grace. Now, for those who don't know, Jordan Grace isn't your real name, but it's such a money making name. How did you come up with the name Jordan Grace? What's the story behind it? Oh, man. Um, I actually used to e fed back in the day. I don't know if you guys know what that is. Uh uh. Mm. Okay, so it's like, um, you know how there's like role playing accounts on, on like Twitter and stuff now? Right. Okay, well, they used to have that, but they used to have like actual websites to go on and do it. And so I, you, you can go on there and pretend to be like a wrestling persona, basically. And so uh, that's the name I picked for that. And then you could pick like, um, like any wrestler you wanted and like pretend like that was who you looked like. So like I picked Madison Rain. Madison Rain was like, uh, the person that I used, like that was who I looked like on my in my persona. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah, that's what that's what e fetting is basically, and that's where I came up with the name. So speaking of professional wrestling, was it was something you watched growing up? But so like, who are your favorite wrestlers that you like growing up? Um, I really liked my favorite wrestler, the one that I I got my first action figure. Guys, can you hold on one second? I'm literally gonna put this dog up real quick. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Do your thing, Mama. Do you? <laughs> he really, he he was serious about being a part of the show. He's like, I'm gonna get in this video. We y'all are gonna see me. Y'all gonna hear me. <laughs> we y'all are not gonna ignore me in this video, man. Uh, look, he got, he got 15 minutes of fame, man. Hey, he wanted to make sure. Like, I promise you guys, he's been sitting here for hours and with nothing. And then as no. soon as it started, he was like, oh, it's time. It's, it, we're, it's showtime, baby. Yeah, he's oh, a I, showtime I, dog. I, we we, yeah, we understand it. It's okay. <laughs> but anyway, so like I was saying, my first ever action figure was actually, it's probably surprising to you guys, but Evan Bourne. Oh, I was wow. a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a huge fan of him when I was a kid. I just, I love the shooting star press. I think that was probably like the first ever high flying move I ever saw in wrestling. And I was just enamored with it. So that was uh, my first ever action figure. <laughs> wow. That, that's definitely a surprising one too, Cole. Your turn, man. Uh, so who for you was that, uh, if there was, who was that inspiration, that 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 person that you saw? I, you said you had an Evan Bourne, but who was that person you saw, first saw wrestling? You're like, I, that person right there is my motivator. That person got me into it. If, if there's a person for you. It was it was definitely Beth Phoenix. Like she was she was my number one. Like okay. every time I saw her, I was like, she's just so strong and and beautiful and powerful. Like I wanted to be just like her. So a lot of my career, like that's who I've been trying to like live up to, basically. That's cool. Uh, who what uh what other sports, what other things that you were, uh, you know, that you made excelled in or that, you know, had your attention before wrestling or as wrestling? So I actually, <laughs> my dog broke through the gate. <laughs> I'm going to go upstairs. <laughs> He's like, you are not going to do this show without him. <laughs> he is not having this. <laughs> he is not. Like, I'm going to actually go I'm so sorry. This never happened. No, here. you're fine. Yeah, this is fine. Hey, man, look. This here on the GOW, time. man, this is what, hey, we, <laughs> shenanigans are always going on, so that's fine. <laughs> okay, we're going to turn on this light. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, emb- I'm really embarrassed, guys. No, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. He's like, you are not going to leave me out. <laughs> like, I, he just busted down his gate and ran back into the <laughs> Okay, this is better lighting anyways. <laughs> okay, repeat the question one more time. <laughs> uh, any other sports or activities that you participated in before before wrestling? Yeah, so when I was in middle school, I actually uh, was a cheerleader. Okay. So <laughs> that was not um, really for me. I guess it was a lot of like just uh, drama in cheerleading, which I guess kind of the same in wrestling, but it was a little bit different. Um, and then actually all throughout high school, while I was professional wrestling too, I did I did amateur wrestling. So I did oh. the Olympic style wrestling. Oh, cool. Franchise? Now, uh, speaking of that, so I want to ask you, speaking of drama and, and wrestling and things like that, nothing specific, but has there ever been a storyline or a match that was supposed to go one way and due to politics and stuff like that, end up going completely a different way? Or for the most part, has everything pretty much been – but judging by your look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's, it happens all the time. Like, even if I don't know about it, if something like changes in a storyline or a match, like I know, I already know, like nine out of ten times, like something happened backstage politically that right. that got it changed, you know. So yeah. yeah, it's happened dozens of times probably. And also speaking of that, speaking of being in the industry, is it easier or is it difficult or was it difficult uh, dating someone who married now? Uh, but how, how was that, especially with you guys not being in the same company? Does it make certain storylines awkward for you when it comes to males and things like that? Or is it something you two don't really think too much about and you just view it simply as entertainment? We don't really think too much about it because, A, people know we're together. So typically they don't even try to put us in. They don't try to put me in storylines with men. They don't try right. to put him in storylines with women. If they did have that idea, we'd probably just turn it down, to be honest, just because what's the point? We don't we don't want to have any kind of weird issues like that. So, right. I mean, it hasn't been like a big thing at all. I don't think we've had any any issues with that. Um, oh, there was one match years ago. Uh, I think a guy was like trying to kiss me in a match. And I remember John didn't John didn't like that spot. But we didn't actually we didn't actually kiss. It was just like the the guy was like going in for a kiss, and we did something out of it. But John was right. like, "Oh, I don't like that," and I was like, "Okay, we'll, we'll never do that spot again." He's <laughs> like, "Never, ever, never again." How was it yeah. for it's you coming it. up? <laughs> for you coming up in in the Indies, how was it for you to challenge and go up against someone like Jazz? Oh man, it was, it was nerve wracking. (laughs) Like, I think that's, that's just the main word. Like it was exciting, but I was just scared because you never know how the the veterans in the business are going to act. Like, you know, you don't know if they're going to be super nice or if they're going to be just like, you know, on their, on their high horse, so to speak, or if they're not going to want to do, put in any work because, you know, they've been there, they've done that, they've proved themselves. So why should they have to do anything else? But fortunately, Jazz was not one of those those people, so I got I got lucky. But there are some veterans that are like that, so it always makes me nervous. Like when I meet some, when I meet a veteran who's been wrestling for twenty something years, I'm like, oh, I don't know how it's gonna go. Mm, also, I I see that you were able to be in the I believe it was the uh, Ring of Honor uh, Battle Royale for the championship, and you were the only female in this Battle Royale. How did that feel for you? To be are you the only female. The one, um, are you talking about the one at AEW? All in. No, well, I, I believe it was the. No, I don't think it was AEW. It was the. Uh, no, it was the Ring of Our Championship and all in, all for all in. No, that's AEW. AEW. That's a, oh, that was AEW. Okay, I'm sorry. That was, okay, I, that wrong. I wrote the wrong. Oh, thing it's okay. Down. I was gonna say I've, I've never wrestled for Ring of Honor at all, but I guess technically that show was like a Ring of Honor show, right? Right. Okay, maybe that's okay. What, okay I, wrote, <laughs> I wrote the wrong thing down. That's that's my. <laughs> No, it's okay. Uh, but you were asking how was it? Yes, I, just just being the only female, you know, having that opportunity to be the only female in that match. What what was that like for you? And to go up against again <laughs> Ryan Cage? I was I was ex- so excited. Like I didn't even have like time to be nervous because I knew if I got nervous that I was I, that I was gonna fuck something up. So <laughs> I was just like, you you have to nail this. Like this is like the moment 
and it right. was the moment like that's kind of what catapulted my career so i mean i just tried to you know push all the nerves away and i know brian cage i knew most everybody in the match so i got lucky in that regard like i was familiar with everybody and so i just i just tried to make the most of the opportunity mm, awesome, awesome. speaking of brian cage and and, and being someone uh, of that stature. What was it like working with Scott Steiner? How did that whole thing come about with you and Scott and Petey Williams? And I'm gonna follow up another question as, is Scott Steiner in real life? How close is he to his persona on air? Oh, that's him. Like that's, I mean, obviously not as like misogynistic or, you know, doing all right, that right. stuff, but like the way he talks and his uh, his overall demeanor is, is mm -hmm. kind of the same. He's like, he really reminds me of my my grandpa. Like, <laughs> like, like that's what he reminds me of. He's like, like he's like a just a cool ass grandpa, right? <laughs> that's that's how like he is. That. He's super. He's a super sweet, super nice guy. But like, <laughs> he's like he just like when you're around him, you can you can feel his presence. If right. if I if that makes any sense at all, <laughs> it do it do it does it does. So how, so how did so how did that whole interaction even come about with you guys being paired on screen because aesthetically it worked so how did that even come about was that something you pitched or was it something he pitched how did that come, how did that come to be oh he definitely didn't pitch it i don't i don't think he pitches anything anymore i think he just gets kind of like thrown into these these stories but <laughs> actually so i mean I'm, I'm i'm 25 so that's that steiner promo and like his matches and stuff obviously were kind of like before my time a few years ago, maybe like five, six years ago, I watched the Steiner promo for the first time. And I was like, immediately like, this is the best thing I've ever seen. This is the best promo ever. <laughs> like most everybody, right? And I started watching some of his matches and I just like kind of fell in love with like his persona, his wrestling ability. And I had tweeted something like, oh, what do you guys think my new moniker should be? And one of the options was Thick Mama Pump. Uh -huh. And so that like went out by a lot. And so I started using it on the indies and then somebody, I don't know who like started some kind of campaign about me and Scott Steiner should like do a tag match. And eventually I got signed to impact and then the opportunity came about and I just, it just happened. It just kind of fell into place. Cause they did not, they actually did not want me to use the name thick mama pump first. They did not want, they did not put it on my screen. Um, I don't think I was allowed to have the sirens on my music. And then they just kind of realized, well, fuck. <laughs> She's already right. like, <laughs> everybody already knows her as this on social media and stuff. So we're just going to use it. So I actually didn't even know that they put the name Thick Mama Pump on my Titantron until one day I was watching one of my matches back and I was like, oh shit, they, they put it on there. <laughs> <laughs> also, as, as being a young person, uh, in T and in, in, I'm sorry, in Impact now, and we've all kind of seen what it was years prior, and, and uh, a, lot, a lot of folks were down on Impact as far as all the issues that they were going through. Being someone who was recently there, you won. Uh, what is what is the vibe like in Impact? What was for at least for you during that time? Like, was it a place that it felt like you know you could really harness your craft, you could become more of what you want to be, or did, you know, was it was it kind of like that kind of chaotic place that people think it is? Oh man, it's still kind of a chaotic place, right? But it's it's more it's more comfortable now. Um, I kind of came in right around the time where they were changing like the regime and era, right? Like it went from like Dixie Carter, and then it was going to like Scott D'Amore and Don Callis. Right. So when I got there, there was still a few people that were like, you know, kind of gatekeeping stuff and. It, it made me a little bit uncomfortable, but for the majority of the majority of the people I knew and was familiar with because they I'd worked with them in the Indies for so long. Now it's a completely it's completely different. Three years later, like the locker room is is so chill. Like everybody that comes into the locker room is they all say the same thing. Like everybody's just hanging out. Like mm -hmm. there's no weird stuff going on. Like usually, like in WWE, I've been an extra, obviously, and. It, it just has a certain vibe, right? Like you're, yeah. you're just, you're nervous. <laughs> right, and yeah. I feel like an impact, even the extras, they, they're like in with the locker room. It's all integrated. There's no like extra locker room. And then like the main talent locker room, everybody's together in one, in one spot. 
That's all. I, what is your thoughts on the women, the women's division and just wrestling, period? Uh, and today's where, you know, we have more legit women wrestlers. We don't have and so much of the, the Barbie doll kind of, you know, diva kind of, you know, women. What what are your thoughts on what you see and, and what you love about the women's wrestling of today? I just love that no matter who you are, like if you're a little girl who's black, white, Asian, Hispanic, you can turn on the TV and you can see like yourself in at least one woman, in one woman that's wrestling right now, right? right. Like obviously white blonde women were very popular in when I was growing up. Um, right. And I was like a, a bigger girl back in the day. So, and still, I guess I still am, but <laughs> that's why I kind of like, it drew me to Beth Phoenix because she was just like a bigger girl that I could see myself as. And there's just like Kira Hogan, um, when she was growing up, I'm, I guess she could have looked up to jazz, but that wasn't really like when she was watching. Right. I think right. she looked up to like Naomi or just, you know what I mean? There's all these, yeah. there's all these little girls who can look up and see themselves in some of these women. Oh, awesome. Franchise. Well, so speaking of, of your body type, because you are a very muscular woman. So one of our fans here, they said, you know, with your intense bodybuilding workouts, with you being in the ring, with you obviously having a strength and power advantage over a lot of the women in the division, do you find yourself sometimes having to tone down some of your matches or do you just kind of go at it the same way you would a male? I do go at it the same way I would a male, but just recently I have been, have been uh, feeling the need to start toning it down a little bit. I feel like... Um, I should probably start hitting a little bit, <laughs> not as hard, <laughs> slamming people, not as hard <laughs> because I, I have gotten just over the past few months, I've gotten a lot stronger just from doing my powerlifting workouts. And I feel like now that I'm wrestling in wrestling with the same women, they're kind of like surprised at how easily I can pick them up now, I guess. So right. I definitely do think I should, I need to tone it down a little bit. I haven't yet, but <laughs> I, I think I need to. And just a bit, just a little bit, but you still want to be the dominant female in the company. So I, I, I much respect that. <laughs> and also, speaking of, so I, I watched the interview of you recently, um, not too long ago, and you were talking about the intergender matches not being made a spectacle, but more so being looked at maybe as you know a, a regular thing. Now, for people who really aren't too sure how to feel about intergender matches as somebody that's been in plenty of them uh do you think it can be something we see on a regular basis and how could you go about doing so obviously with the whole domestic violence situation how um i guess sensitive the world has become now it's not really something that's too heavily looked upon in the positive light on the mainstream side but there has been uh, instances proven that it can be done what do you have to say about that? I'm not 100% sure you're ever going to see it in like one of the big main promotions who have these huge sponsors, right? Because those big corporate guys are never going to understand wrestling because they don't mm -hmm. they don't love wrestling. They're not like big fans of wrestling. So I'm not sure if you're ever going to see it like at a real consistent basis in AEW or WWE, which is totally fine because there's places like, you know, Impact, uh, yeah. GCW that these wrestling fans that kind of understand and know that wrestling is an art and mm -hmm. that a man and a woman can create that art together. Those are the people that energy into wrestling is, is kind of more catered to like right. not the, not the PC corporate people. Right. Which right. I totally understand why WWE and AEW wouldn't want to lose these million dollar dollar sponsors they have. Right. Okay. Now, also, and also speaking of impact, I want to say, I want to, I want to talk to you, especially since you, you, you know, you're currently in impact. Impact to me, I feel like has always kind of been ahead of the curve, even though they might not get the credit, as far, especially as far as the women goes. I mean, even the knockouts back in the day when WWE weren't really showcasing their women in the best light and on a consistent basis. I feel like the one thing Impact did right was you had the X Division and you had the women being in prominent roles and matches. How does it feel to work for a company that's kind of always been ahead of where most of these other major companies are just not really starting to get into as far as putting on women's matches and showcasing the women in the main event on a more I mean, basis. it feels awesome. Like that's, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to come to impact was because they're, they're kind of just 
and you know, impact is maybe like a little bit more under the radar in terms of like, um, I guess what, what do they call it? Like PC culture, like doing stuff like intergender wrestling. Right. 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 Um, right. so I feel like they can, they can get away with more of it, which is why I like it more. It's kind of, it's not your, your mainstream pro wrestling. Right. Who are, let's go past and present. Who are, if, if you could have picked two people, who are two male wrestlers, if you could have an intergender match with, that you would love to have a match with? I would love to have a match with Eddie Guerrero, which mm. I feel like is would be everybody's top choice, right? Yeah. And yeah. Um, Bret Hart. I feel like that would be, Ooh. be awesome. That's a hell of a marquee. You got Latino Heat, Big Mama Pump. Okay. I, I, okay. <laughs> right. I, I, what, what, uh, what, Bret Hart, I, you know, I, I, being a little bit younger, why, why do you say Bret Hart? I can understand why you say Eddie Guerrero, you know, kind of more him, but why Bret Hart? Because when I started watching, like, when I started watching older WWE stuff, mm -hmm. um, that was one of the people that just stood out to me as being just the coolest fucking guy. And then yeah. I saw him wrestle and it made him even cooler. So I've just been, a, I've just been a huge fan of him. Oh, that, that, that is awesome. Uh, what is, what are you, what, what is your take on AEW uh, as far as what they're doing in the wrestling business, uh, the doors that they've opened, uh, the, the, folk, the, the way that they've allowed other companies to come in and showcase themselves and to showcase talent like yourself and others. What are your thoughts on AEW and just how they I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I'm 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 really excited about it because it feels new and refreshing and cool and also like as many as my friends can get jobs that I I want everybody to yeah. get a job, right? Like I want right, everybody right. to get paid for doing what they love. And if AEW is employing all these people, what's not to love about it? Right. Awesome. French ass. Nah, I, I I got a question for you. So you recently re-signed with Impact again. So how does it feel knowing that you're such a top priority? Because like my partner said, you know, for a while, Impact slash TNA at the time, they've had their ups and downs. And at one point, they were the competition, legit competition for WWE. When I started watching it again back in 2017, 2018, one of the things that really stuck out, like I said earlier, with the women's division, you, Tessa Blanchard, Taya Valkyrie, so on and so forth. So how does it feel knowing male or female, you're one of the top priorities in Impact Wrestling? I mean, I don't, I don't know if I'm a top priority. <laughs> I mean, I know that uh, I, I love it there, and I like to think that I'm like, you know, um, one of the, one of the people that people think about when they think about impact. But um, I don't know. I've never considered myself a top priority there. I guess. Hmm. You're, you're being humble, but I, I'm, I'm gonna let that slide because <laughs> I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but moving forward, moving forward, realistically, I mean, how, how much longer do you see yourself in the ring? I, I know you say you're 25. You still obviously got a lot of years on you. But, right. you know, in the perfect world, if you can go out on top, you know, what's that 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 target age for you if you have one? Um, I was, man, a target age. Ugh. I, I want to wrestle forever, but obviously you can't do that, right? Um, Probably, like, around 35. I think I would start toning it down and maybe like start doing some stuff outside of the ring, but still in wrestling. Like that would be ideal for me. I would love to be an agent or a producer or something like that. Hmm. I, so I, I, that was kind of going to be my next question. Uh, you know, outside of wrestling, what is that other thing that you look at that you want to do? Uh, if wrestling, not to say to take it away from you, but you know, you decide to hang it up, but you, you definitely got an eye on this this is that other thing that i always wanted to try and do and now i got the opportunity to do it what is that but if i if genuinely just, feel like i feel like i would be an awesome agent for women's wrestling like i love to plan matches i love to study stuff and research matches so i feel like i would be an asset in that way i i think i'd be a great agent so that's that's my goal <laughs> when i hit 35. So, so speaking of agents and, and, and backstage personnel, what was it like, you know, working and being around a woman like Gail Kim? Because, you know, we love Gail Kim here. So uh, how was it to see women like Gail Kim, Mickey James, really kind of grab the reins and, you know, push wrestling, women's wrestling to the forefront? So when I first met Gail, I was kind of, I don't, I don't, I guess you would say starstruck because, mm -hmm. 
the first time I met her, she was helping me plan a match, which was bizarre. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but I love Gail. I think she's obviously one of the, the best women's wrestlers of all time. Um, there are a lot of things generally generationally that we don't see eye to eye on because I think, uh, I guess, obviously the women's revolution was, you know, in era wrestling where women were like incredible wrestlers, but now it's kind of like, it's flipped a little bit and we're doing more stuff. I guess you would say like more spots in the ring, you're remembering more right. stuff, like high paced, high action, stuff like that. And so right. there'll be times when, I, when I'm when i talking to Gail and I'll like call this really long, intricate spot and she'll be like, man, that's a lot. <laughs> and I'll be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> trying to keep their attention, right? <laughs> Uh, so, so, so speaking of trying to keep their attention, how difficult well, what was the transition like wrestling in front of a crowd? And then, of course, when the pandemic first hit, having to wrestle in front of absolutely nobody. What was that transition like mentally for you and other talent? So even these past two months, I keep forgetting that there's going to be a crowd there. And when I find out there's a crowd, I'm like, oh, man, there's a crowd. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> but <laughs> during the pandemic, like. I don't know. I just wasn't, I wasn't excited. I guess I wasn't like really that excited to go and have these wrestling matches because there was going to be no reaction really. And unless it was on, unless it was like streamed live or unless it sh was showing on social media. And sometimes I would have matches and it wouldn't be shown on TV for six weeks. So by yeah. that time I completely forgot about the match. <laughs> so I just think it, I just think fans, in general, being present at shows is probably one of the most important things in wrestling. We need that reaction and we need we need that fuel. It's basically like it's gas for pro wrestlers. We need that to, to thrive. Too cold. Is it possible? And, and uh, you know, I, I, is it possible that one day we can see Jordan Grace be the impact world champion and, and, and really oh, take I think it's I think it's definitely a possibility. <laughs> Okay. If it were my decision, it would be a possibility for sure. And I, I'm sure that, you know, impact management isn't a thousand percent against it, maybe like 98 percent. But there's still that two percent chance. <laughs> I mean, being one of the few females that can, you know, hold their own in a ring with a male, you know, that, you know, that right there is a, is awesome in itself. But I, I could I could definitely see you doing it, especially, you know, with the uh, thick mommy pump. Give me I. I, I couldn't see you coming out with sirens and chain mail on the head. I, I, I can see it all. I, I I really would love to have Scott Steiner be my manager if I were to do that. If I were to like have a Impact World Title run, that would be my dream is to have Scott as my manager. And you know what? I can see it. He chasing up all the dudes. Okay, I, I, I like that. I like I, that. that. That's, what, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, we 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 gonna put that out into the universe. We are gonna manifest all right, that. So Jordan, so the yes, one thing manifest I noticed, it. Yeah, we gonna manifest, manifest that. We gonna do that. Go manifest. Today, manifest. So my partner here, he asked about potential uh, dealings outside of the ring. One thing I noticed, you got, you know, your bikini, your photo shoots and stuff like that. How important is it for you as a talent to have outside business ventures, outside of just wrestling? Because you see so many stories of people, they wrestle and that's all they have. And then the injury or something happens and they have nothing to fall back on. How important is it for you to make money and to make a living elsewhere in case that doesn't work out for you? That is honestly my main priority. Like all these years I've been trying to figure out something other than wrestling, because like you said, you can't get hurt or no one knew that this pandemic was going to happen. And if I didn't, ha if I hadn't started my Patreon like a year before I got really, really lucky because that was when everybody was making their Patreons, but I already right. had like, you know, an established uh, number of subscribers. I was already making it in monthly income off of that. So I mean, I think it's one of the most important things. Like, if you're a wrestler, you need to be finding another way to make money. Uh, speaking of Patreon, shameless plug here. Please plug it in for yourself. <laughs> my Patreon is patreon.com slash Jordan Grace. And you got my name spelled correct on here, so I don't I won't spell it out like I normally do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't have a guest on and not do the research. I figured that's very least we can do right, man, you're right. Hey, hey, as well, man. Put it out there. There are times where my name has been spelled incorrectly. <laughs> really? Yeah. Hey, 100%. Google is a hell of a drug. <laughs> Too cold. Your turn, brother. Uh, actually, uh, I think I've reached all my questions. <laughs> um, 
So, uh, okay, you say you're back in Impact. Who was that first person that you are looking forward to to getting in the ring with? Oh, man. Oh, you know, every time someone asks me that, I know I've already wrestled her, but I just, I just want to wrestle Deanna again. I just feel like oh. we have such amazing chemistry. I just want to wrestle her, like, every day of the week. <laughs> now, speaking of Deanna, how much of a boost was that for the division? Because, you already, like I said, you already had you. Uh, you guys had Tessa, you guys had Tyre before she left. How awesome is it to see Deanna see how she's kind of come in from where she came from and she's just really made a big name for herself on Impact? You say you guys had good matches and you know you want to wrestle her again, uh, but how is she as an in-ring performer behind the scenes? Oh, she's she's an incredible in-ring performer. Like like I was saying, she's she's one of, if not the favorite person I've ever wrestled. So I feel like her coming in and doing these and putting on these matches and she's, she has good matches with basically everybody. Right. Yeah. So I feel like that was a huge boost to the division. Got another question for you. Who is the most underrated wrestler in your opinion that could low key be the biggest superstar if given the proper opportunity? Man, I'm, I'm so biased because I want to say my husband every time I'm asked this question. That like <laughs> you, hey, you better promote your hey, man. Go you ahead. better say that. That better been your first answer. That, <laughs> that should have been the first response. But I also feel like he's fine. Like my husband is Jonathan Gresham. He's mm -hmm. finally getting his his credit slowly but surely. And I feel like when he when he finally like goes to AEW or WWE, like people are gonna see like he's one of the best wrestlers in the world. Like hands down. He no one does the style that he does the way he does it. Mm. He's a, he's a big guy too. He's no joke. But speaking of your husband, how did you guys end up actually meeting? We met at a wrestling show. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Which uh, what show? I believe it was IWA, IWA Mid South. Actually. Oh really? Yeah. Or I don't know if you know what Beyond Wrestling is, but they used yeah. to do um, studio tapings in St. Louis. Uh -huh. And I think it was either I Mid South or a Beyond Wrestling studio taping in St. Louis. Oh my goodness! All right, Joy, we got one more for you. So my partner here, he asked you, you know, past or present, but I'm going to ask you this one: Is there any match type that you haven't been involved in that you got to cross off your bucket list before you wrap it up? Is my thing on? Yep, yeah, you're on. Yep, yeah. you're on. We can hear you. Can I you hear us? We can, we can Hello. Hear yep. Uh oh. Can you hear us? There can you, you guys go. see me? I hear you. Yeah, we can see. see you. We can see. Oh, you. Yep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like, uh, I'm the sorry, guys. I'm playing with Hold on one second. Uh -oh. Let me see if I. Nope. Can you can hear we us? can't hear you. We can hear you, but you can't hear us. Oh, there you go. We're almost over. Hold on, don't go away, folks. Don't go away. She'll be back. She's coming right back. She's coming <laughs> right back. Technical difficulties. Yeah, damn weather, man. I swear, boy. But <laughs> oh, definitely. There she go. Hold on. Here she goes. She's back. Let's see. There you go. Can I you don't know. Us? I don't know what just happened, guys. There's a lot going on tonight, apparently. No, <laughs> hey, man, it's, it's the weather, man. It's going crazy. It's not just you. <laughs> okay, but ask your question again. I'm sorry, I didn't. It, it like cut off. No, you're fine. I, I said, has there been a match type you haven't had yet that you want to have a dream match uh, type that you haven't been involved in yet? I don't think there's a match type that I've been involved in that I don't that I want to be a part of. But there's matches that I want to redo in front of bigger audiences, if that makes sense. Like uh -huh. I would love to have a two, three falls match in front of like an actual audience instead of like you know. 14 people at some show I wrestled at when I was 16, right? <laughs> I would love to do it in front of like a big audience and have reactions. <laughs> so let me guess, who would that be against, Deanna? Yeah, that would definitely be against Deanna. I think, yeah, for sure, 100%. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, well, I just got to ask you this because we do this with everybody. So I figured since we got Thick Mama Pump in the building, the former yes. Impact Knockouts champion in the building. I want to know, could you cut a promo putting over the GOW before we get off of here? Mm. Could I put cut a promo put, putting over the GOW? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, please. Oh, man. You know what? You know what? When people ask me to do promos on the spot, I guess tell them 
I tell you, I'm not good at promos. I rehearse my promos all the time before I do them on, on, on the, <laughs> on screen <laughs> or during, during interviews or anything like that. But I will tell you that GOW is the best interview podcast radio show in the world. Like I would do this with you guys all day long. All right, we appreciate it. See, look, see, appreciate see now, it. see now I gotta, I gotta clip this and I gotta send this to everybody. So for now, <laughs> Jordan Grace said we the best. So if you don't hop and if y'all don't like it, she, yeah. hey, she gonna smack the hell out of you. So you better yep. respect. No, you guys, you guys have been very nice. You guys have been very, you know, well researched and educated about stuff. So I definitely appreciate that. <laughs> I know. Well, uh, we, yeah, we, we, we try to be come on the show. We professional and not sure. right. We try to be professional, not just so much as fanboys. Like, yeah, of course, we're a fan of the business and and people, and we want to talk with folks, but we also want to be respectful. So we thank you for you know taking the time out to talk with us. No, I appreciate you guys, and I love your shirt. That look, that's that's your background and your shirt and your whole vibe is is really is is, is going off today. I love it. <laughs> I, I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Well, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in to an episode of Generation Wrestling Podcast. It's a 28-year-old piece of gold. He's too cold. She's thick mama pump. And until next time, peace. <laughs>